Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Okay, you sounded like Platteville for a minute there. It's uh, a little daunting following the marching jukebox. Uh, weren't they fabulous? Yes. And it's important to understand as I walked in, I introduced myself to several of them. Computer science major, biology major, uh, music performance major from parishes nearby. One young man was from Cincinnati. Um, and remember that they're students. Um, they're a fabulous group. I can't, I can't imagine, you probably haven't had that good entertainment at a Rotary meeting in a long time. But they're students. And that's what the core mission of Southern University system and its constituent organizations are all about. And so that's why it's really a great pleasure and honor for me to see them perform and for you to be introduced to them. Now, if you want the full effect, you need to come to the football game this Saturday, because there's a whole lot more to this show that's pretty remarkable. I encourage you, if you haven't done that in the past, you have to come experience that. So welcome, Rotary of Baton Rouge. Welcome to Southern University. It's a great turnout. I see a lot of friends and colleagues. And on behalf of the Southern University system, its Board of Supervisors represented here today by the Chair, Edwin Shorty, who's sitting down here front, uh, and all of the other people. And you will see some of the other university leadership present here today. I've been in higher education for 40 years. And maybe the central lesson that I've learned is that it's no one individual. It doesn't matter if they're the president, the chancellor, the dean, a faculty member. It's the collective effort and energy of everyone on the campus that makes for success. And I'm sure as Rotarians, you understand you, understand that. And, and the world is grateful for your, your worldwide service and commitment to global and local communities. I'm going to talk a little bit about myself in a minute, but let me, for those of you who are not familiar with the Southern University system, it is the nation's only historically black university system. And it consists of this campus, Southern University and A&M College, the flagship campus, Southern University Agricultural Research and Extension Center, located here, Southern University Law Center, Southern University of New Orleans, and Southern University of Shreveport. The sphere of influence of Southern University is not only Scotlandville, where you are today, Greater Baton Rouge, but also the surrounding parishes, the state of Louisiana, this region of the country, and yes, indeed, I was just in, in Washington, D.C., and the leadership there, uh, by large measure, represents Lu Louisiana, and there's a strong Southern contingent there that demonstrates the impact that this university has across the country. Yes, it's my first 100 days um, here at a historically black system. I'm a Midwesterner. I was born and raised in Iowa. And I know the black folks are saying, the black folks in Iowa? Yes, they do. There's still two left. <laughs> but my connection to historically black universities goes back from the time when I was 7 to 11 years old, where um, I went to live with a foster family, a doctor who was practicing medicine in rural Iowa, who was a graduate of a historically black university and historically black medical school. And it was a remarkable time in my life because when they traveled to visit their families in Ohio and New York, along the way, they would stop and visit his peers from college and medical school, and her peers from college. It was at that age, 7 to 11, that I thought, well, everybody goes to high school and then goes on to college and goes on to bigger and better things. And I am in great debt to that family for planting that seed, even though I wasn't aware of it at the time, that I would move forward. That's relevant to what Southern University is all about. There are some extraordinary many extraordinarily talented students here, but many of them have journeys like mine. Not all of them, but many of them come from very modest backgrounds, and many of them are the first generation in their families to go to college. That's the unique mission of this historically black institution. It has 
been the way forward for so many hundreds of thousands of people since its founding over a century ago. Now my career, went to college, a small liberal arts college in Iowa, Graceland University, and uh, probably the only other person you've heard of that went to college there was someone who used to be called Bruce Jenner. And we didn't overlap there, but he graduated the summer before I started there. And then I went on to the University of Iowa Law School. And uh, I went to law school because it seemed to me that lawyers had had a profound impact on civil rights in this country, and I wanted to be a part of that. And that brings me back to Southern University Law Center. So 33% of the judiciary in this state are graduates, are African American, and of those, that 33%, 95% of them are graduates of the Southern University Law Center. That is a profound impact on the judiciary in this state and part of the core role that this university plays in advancing the cause of all people of color across this state. And I'm very proud to be associated with that law school. Now my career then moved me from working 10 years at the University of Iowa Law School onto the uh, University of Michigan for seven years, then on to Duke Law School for another eight years, then to Arizona, another place where they think it's cold when it gets below 40 degrees. I'm glad to be back in a place like that. One year in New York City at the City College of New York, and finally at the University of Wisconsin, Platteville, in rural Wisconsin. So I went from New York, city of nine million stories, to Platteville, a city of 10,000 stories. My wife is very pleased to be in a more populated place than Wisconsin because her roots are in Philadelphia. Andre and I, my wife, viewed the opportunity to come to Baton Rouge and be a part of Southern University as a unique and inspiring opportunity. And the opportunity to work with the many talented people on campus and talented people in this community was unique and inspiring. And Southern came into being through an act of the Louisiana legislature in 1880, and it got to start in New Orleans, and in 1914, it established this campus in Southern University. Southern University of New Orleans was founded in 1956, Southern University of Shreveport in 1967, and it formally became a system in 1974. It has a rich history, and I encourage you to come. If you, if you walk across this campus and read just the street signs, the names of those people, um, it had a profound impact on this state and on particularly African-American lives in Louisiana. Again, it's the only historically black college and university system. It's a land-grant institution. And it has, that allows it to have an influence on agriculture across the state. It, is, it consists of the, the, the uh, Southern com, uh, community of Southern University, includes engaged students, great faculty and staff, and an extraordinarily engaged alumni uh, base. So all of which are representative of the rich history of this institution with a vision of serving as a premier university system for all students who seek exceptional ex educational opportunities to advance their careers and prepare them to contribute to society. I am in collaboration with the Southern University Board of Supervisors, the Louisiana Board of Regents, and the faculty and staff of the university, shaping a vision for the system and will execute strategies to achieve excellence in representing the system's public agenda for higher education. And everyone on this campus embraces Southern's vital and critical role as a leader in outstanding student outcomes, workforce solutions, and community and economic development. Having said that, let me talk about the priorities I've set for the first year. Number one, I have to learn and I have to become known. But in a broader perspective, I'm committed to students. I know from my own origins that excellent student outcomes are central to what Southern University is about. So having a positive and successful first year, you can't get to your second year in college without having a good first year. And 
then matriculating through to graduation in a timely fashion. That persistence is central to what I think this university ought to be about. We want to enhance student engagement. The very activities you see today with the human jukebox is an example of the way students engage life on this campus. Yes, classroom experience is extraordinarily important. The intellectual activity involved in getting your education is important. But if you think you can be prepared to go out in the world, the masses of students can be prepared to go out in the world just by taking classes out online, you're kidding yourself. The opportunity to be a part of student organizations, to mix with your peers, to follow the lead of, of faculty and graduate and professional students here, that all enhances the experience. There are hundreds of organizations. Everybody gets the chance to learn how to lead on this campus. That's all part of that experience, and that's central to my focus of first year, that we are intentionally aware of the nature and quality of the experience that students are having on this campus that lead to success. So that educational mission is the core. But obviously, we have a role as what I call stewards of place. That is, this university be, ought to be a part, owes it to this community to be part of helping this community thrive. And in that fashion, we need to be engaging with K through 12 and the businesses and industry surrounding this campus and helping the city of Baton Rouge thrive, the parishes around Baton Rouge, and yes, across the state of Louisiana. The third piece is building on the engagement that's already in place, but reaching out to all of our external stakeholders, represented by business and industry, uh, governing boards, local, state, national elected officials, and our alumni. Of course, I go back, my number one priority is, is excellent student outcomes. But these are actually also important to our role. So this focus on students is intriguing, and uh, I appreciate the opportunity to be here. It, I'm enjoying the experience of learning about HBCU culture up close for the first time. But I'm viewing it through the lens of enhancing student outcomes and the student experience. Speaking of culture, I'm having a lot of firsts here in Louisiana with the food, the family nature of the place, the fellowship of the Jaguar Nations, and, you know, tailgates, that kind of thing. And I'm still learning the language. You know, there's a place down the road here that I say Iowa that I've discovered is said Iowa. And some of, the, some of the cities I won't even begin to pronounce without the guidance of somebody else because I will butcher them. Next week I will participate in my first Jaguar homecoming and Southern alumni have been trying to prepare me for the epicness of that event. My staff even told me to condition myself for a week that is a marathon, not a sprint. They're also preparing me for some little party they have in New Orleans around Thanksgiving. It's called the Bayou Classic. Um, and I understand it's the oldest HBCU classic. And yes, they said that's a marathon too. And that, mo that most importantly, we must always be victorious over Grambling State. I'm looking forward to seeing those two events. My first 100 days just concluded. I've been listening and learning. I've met with students, parents, faculty and staff, administrators, alumni, donors, prospective donors, supporters, community and business leaders and community partners, elected officials, high and higher education colleagues. And I'm grateful to the Rotary today for allowing me to come and meet with you and welcome you to this campus. I truly appreciate the warm reception I've received from all of these stakeholders and it has made the transition quite pleasant. Now a few weeks ago we had a historic football game with LSU. But more than that, LSU President William Tate and myself signed in a historic agreement called the A&M Agenda. I commend LSU President William Tate for his leadership and for welcoming me me as we began discussions on the A&M partnership even prior to my arrival here. As leaders of the state's land-grant universities, we both appreciated that this is the start of a very intentional commitment to expand our potential 
that seeks to build on the strengths of both institutions through this collaborative effort and expand the positive impact of our institutions across the state of Louisiana and beyond. This is critical because the greatest source of human capital needed to sustain this state is in the people of this state. The A&M agenda seeks, speaks to opportunities and community through communication, collaboration, and an express commitment for a positive impact. And from this work, we will likely see the greatest impact on our students, an impact that I believe will be immeasurable. As I've listened to our stakeholders, and particularly our students and alumni, one of the resounding messages to address is the facilities and infrastructure of this campus. 108 years on this landmass, and we are feeling the age. Now, I can't take credit for this, but just prior to when I arrived here, an $880 million master plan was set forth for the Baton Rouge landmass. The plan is to launch a capital campaign to raise funds, but also to leverage funding from the state of Louisiana and other government entities. As I said, I've met with and listened to quite a few stakeholders. And some started contacting me within, I think the announcement came out about 12.15 on February 18th. I think by 1 o'clock I'd hit, heard from 10 people from Louisiana. It's great to know that people are that passionate. A few observations I've made so far. There are amazing and talented students throughout the SU system. As I mentioned, first generation students, legacy students, many high achieving students, and those who need a little more assistance. I'd like some, if there's students in the room, please stand up and be recognized. There we go. Along that same line, it takes a committed and engaged Board of Supervisors. I know Chairman Shorty's here. Are there any other members of the Board of Supervisors here? All right, you already had a hand. I'm not going to have you stand up. Uh, but there's 16 members of our board, and they're representative of all the congress congressional districts, several are at large members and one student member. We have great faculty and staff, and, so, and a number of the faculty and staff and our deans and academic leaders are here today. Please stand and be recognized. I know there's some of you. Dean Brown. All right. And, you know, as someone who in the summer did labor outside, mowing grass and doing things, there are all manner of other hardworking staff here whose contributions are, you know, innumerable and oftentimes go unnoted. But if, the, if there are any of our other staff here, please stand and be recognized. And I've learned that the alumni are passionate and engaged. Southern University alumni love this institution. And when it comes to Jaguar athletics, I don't even have time to go into the enthusiasm that surrounds that. But our, I think our athletic director and several of our coaches are here today. If you're here, please stand. There we go. And you know what I just discovered is that uh, the women's basketball team is going to the University of Iowa to play in November, and I plan to be there for that game. And I will be rooting for Southern. <laughs> so lastly, I've learned that Southern University has immense potential. From these 100 days, I fully understand the mission, and I know my assignment. This is a unique role as president of the only HBU system and chancellor of its flagship campus. Be assured I don't take it lightly and I invite you on this journey with us as we move forward and continue to leverage our advantage as a system, build on Southern's historic accomplishment and prepare the university for an even stronger future. Thank you for your time today. Now, I'm a lawyer by training. I know you're applauding because my speech wasn't as long as you thought it'd be. So we, we have a few minutes for questions. And uh, without a microphone down on the floor, if you have a question, if you could uh, 
kind of announce it as best you can, and we'll try to see if uh, the President will answer a few questions before our time's up. Yes? Amen. Well, the first place you're probably going to see activity is in another residence hall that is going to be built. Um, we hope to break ground on that within months. Okay, that's number one. Um, there, there are things in the state pipeline, a uh, new engineering facility, a uh, new nursing facility. We're going to be asking the state to, uh, made a request last year to, to uh, uh, a brand new lab school, which we think has some progress to be made. Um, I, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't say the support of the legislature, and particularly the Legislative Black Caucus, has been critical to that as well as having a governor that believes in higher education. Uh, that's, that's pretty amazing. We got another year and a half of him, so we got to make hay while the sun shines. Well, quite, quite frankly, the level of passion that the alumni have about everything. <laughs> and I didn't realize how well advised I'd be over the course of my period here. So a lot of talent helped me figure things out. But the people in Louisiana are extraordinarily friendly. And I'm learning the language, because we don't put Miss and Mr. in front of first names in the Midwest. But I'm learning that. Well, we swag. I think that's clear. Um, I, your comments well served. 
Okay, and as we proceed down the path, we need to work at figuring out how best to collaborate and work together. I, I know that if we're going to be a steward of place, we have to be act actively engaged locally. Now, one of the things I'd say is we do, we are much more engaged than people know about. So one of my instructions about this is not only be engaged with your local communities, also get the word out there that it's happening. I, I think you'd be surprised by how many things are actually going on. That doesn't mean we don't need to coordinate them better, that we don't need to publicize them better. My self-interest is that we need to work cl more closely with K through 12. Now the good news is that we just garnered an $11 million grant that's going to expand our upward bound program. And so we're going to be able to be much more engaged with K through 12 across the parishes that are adjoin us and across the school districts that are close to us. But we're going to have to stay on top of it. And part of what I tell you is just hold me accountable. Get, let's meet and let's talk. Last week, last week. <clears throat> Uh, well, I know of the Black Caucus, uh, the overwhelming majorities have uh, degrees from Southern, either the Law Center or the undergraduate program or one of the graduate programs. That, that's true about almost all of the Black Caucus. Uh, beyond that, there are other members uh, that are graduates of the Law Center. Where, where you see what I've learned is in almost every significant industry, in this area, there are Southern graduates at, at Exxon, at Shell, at Dow, at almost every significant uh, uh, business and industry here. Now, we need to be more engaged with those industry councils and be present. Um, we need to follow through and execute in our engagements with them. But in almost every instance, it doesn't matter if you're talking about local government, state government, if you're talking about business and industry, we have alumni in critical positions in almost all of those areas. We got to collaborate, coordinate, and move forward. Thank you, thank you so much. Yep. President Chancellor Dennis Shields, thank you.